Every time you interrogate the beliefs and biases that you have about other bodies, you interrupt a system that profits off of the way that you feel about other bodies and the systems of comparison that we live in. Our relationship with our bodies is our access to a more just and equitable world. Our relationship with other people's bodies is how we bend the box towards justice. Mm -hmm. While society may try to body shame people who look different, our next guest is unapologetic about her size and empowers women to begin self-love. And Bustle Magazine named her one of 12 women who paved the way for body positivity. Here with more on her new book, The Body Is Not An Apology, is Sonia Renee Taylor. Welcome Hello, to the show. Hello, Sonia. Thanks so much for having me. Wow, thank you for joining us. That was a powerful speech mm -hmm. that we just heard there. Oh, now, you. what led to you writing this book? You know, I've been doing the work of radical self-love through my company, The Body's Not an Apology, since uh, 2011. Mm -hmm. And we run a digital media platform, an education platform, really focused on how do we learn how to get back to the way that we came here, yes. which is radical self-love. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like it was time to take all of those ideas that we've been sort of sharing with folks and put them in one place that's easy to I get to. Well, do you think... Was this something that you had to deal with your entire life, like body shaming, that you said, you know what, I'm tired of this, I have to put a stop and do something about it? Or Yeah, I think that it's something that we all deal with. Mm -hmm. Like What I talk about in the book is from the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night, there are messages telling you somehow you're not good enough, yep. mm -hmm. somehow something's wrong with you, right? And all of us are conditioned to believe that, to hear that inner chatter. And the work of the book is really to remind us that that voice, that chatter of negativity, isn't your actual authentic mm -hmm. self. Your authentic self already knows Knows you're amazing and awesome and enough just yes. as you are. Clearly, you're a motivational speaker. Never you are. <laughs> now, talk to me about the self love that you develop because it seems to be one of the watchwords for 2018. Everyone's mm -hmm. screaming, self love, love yourself, but are we really doing it enough? How did you develop your self love? So, I think that. I think that it is a buzzword, and I think we aren't doing it enough. And again, I don't think that it's a function of figuring out how you learn to do it. Mm. It's about figuring out what are the things that are in the way of me loving myself. Right. And so part of that work for me has been to really start to interrogate the messages that I hear. Mm. When someone is, you know, when I'm in this brain mindset of like, oh, my stomach should be flat. Mm. My question is like, who said? Yep. Mm. And why did they yep. say that? You know, yeah. if, if I'm having this idea like, oh, my hair doesn't look good enough. Starting to ask ourselves, where did this message come from and why am I choosing to believe it? Oh, mm, I love that. that. Are so you giving me goosebumps? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, I need to be writing all this down. This just is good get for the all book. of us. Just right? get the book. Get the book. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Well, take us back to the time when you reluctantly posted the self-love photo for the first time. Why did you do it? And what was going through your mind? How were you feeling when you did it? Absolutely. So I had taken this selfie. It was in my phone and I felt fabulous. I felt powerful. I was in this little black corset. It was racy. Uh, and at the same time, I was really listening to this negative voice saying, don't post that. People will judge you. And so I didn't share the photo for like six months. Uh, and then someone shared a photo of a plus size model on my Facebook page. And she was in a black corset looking fabulous. Yeah. And I was like, somebody paid that woman a lot of money to put her juicy thighs on the internet. What is keeping me from doing this? And so she inspired me to post that selfie. Wow. And in the selfie, I said, I am 230 pounds, I have a really bad tattoo, and I feel beautiful and powerful <laughs> in my body. Post a photo where you do too. Yes. The next morning, 30 people had tagged me in wow. photos. Wow. Amazing. And I was like, maybe we need a space where we get a chance to feel unapologetic and mm -hmm. celebrate our bodies. So I made a Facebook page, um, and that was seven years ago, and today we're a uh, social media and education company, 32 people in four countries help us run the body is not wow. an apology. But you know what? She makes it sound so easy. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you just do it. Yeah. Just <laughs> but yeah. I've been afraid as a man to post pictures Absolutely. of myself, you know, without a shirt on on the internet because some people are like, oh, he doesn't not have that afraid. Pack. He, he, he <laughs> presses one the other day. I've been working hard lately. But when I wasn't in yeah. shape, there is that, you know, that overlooming yes. negative thing that says don't do it. People are going to talk yes. about you. They're going right. to dog you. They're going to joke about you. You just don't feel like hearing it. Um, so Absolutely. how do we get to the point, I know you say just get rid of the things in the way, but what are some steps that will get us there to where we are confident enough in our bodies to just embrace all the love we have. Totally. So in the back of the book, I have what I call the Radical Self-Love Toolkit. Okay. It's 10 tools that you can start living into today to do what I call unplug from the message, the indoctrination of body shame, and plug into radical self-love. Mm. One of them is dump the junk. 
think about all the stuff that you feed into your own uh, brain and psyche every single day that is all about negative messages about your body or other people's bodies. Think about the magazines we buy. Yeah. Like we literally pay people $8 to tell us, sorry, you're not cute enough. Mm -hmm. Sorry, <laughs> you need to be thinner. You need to be smarter. You need to be sexier. What if we stopped doing that? What if we started thinking about like, what are the messages that I'm watching on TV? Mm -hmm. What are the messages I'm listening to on the radio? And just do a little fast, yep. a little toxic media fast, right? Um, another one of the things that I talk about is Tool number three, which is reframe your framework. Your body is not the enemy. Mm. So often we think about our bodies in this adversarial relationship. Why won't you do what I want you to do? No. Why, why aren't you yeah. making a six pack yet? Come right? on. Mm. Uh, come Were on. Were you listening to me this morning? I know, oh I was there. <laughs> I'm everywhere. <laughs> Um, but mm -hmm. what happens when we decide that our bodies are not our enemies but our mm -hmm. allies and that our bodies are working with us to live our best lives, yep. right? If we decide that we're at war with our bodies, then we can't ever have peace. Mm -hmm. And so I really am encouraging us to think about how do we make peace? Not even because it's real yet, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we're still struggling. Maybe we don't believe it. But maybe we can act like we do until we really do. Oh, okay. man. Okay, okay, so I have a question for yes. you. Can we get married? <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm, you're I'm amazing. single. <laughs> I mean, you are amazing. Thank Every you. single word you're saying, I'm literally like, Wow. <laughs> but take us back to the pivotal moment when you decided to shave your hair off and embrace being the bold woman that you are. Yeah, so about six months after I started the Facebook page for The Body Is Not An Apology, I kind of woke up and it, I felt like I woke up and something punched me in my face. I don't even know what it was, but something was like, you are being a hypocrite, Sonia. Every day you wake up and you tell people to love themselves unapologetically, and then you slap on this wig that you've been wearing for the last 15 years. Mm. That you, I had lovers who had never seen me without my wig on. Um, and I had that shame because I had developed traction alopecia when I was oh. in elementary school. And so I got teased unmercifully in elementary school about having thinning and balding hair. Uh, and I had so much shame about it. And I also was clear that I couldn't grow this movement and the vision that I saw for it while still living in these spaces of shame. There's something about the words, the body is not an apology, that, that either makes you live into it or remind you of all the places where you're not. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. I was like, oh, nope, except I'm still acting like my hair is an apology. Mm -hmm. So I decided I was going to do something radical. I was only going to do it for 30 days. I was going to shave my hair because my belief was I couldn't be beautiful without hair. So wow. I was like, all right, I'm going to shave my hair and I'm going to have some people like help promote me and like celebrate me in the beginning of the journey. That was seven years ago, and I never wow. grew my hair back. Uh, and we detailed the entire process, which we call a ruckus project, um, on YouTube. You can see all the videos from wow. it. That's great. And a lot of people are watching on YouTube. 250,000 yeah. subscribers to your blog. Why would you be like this? Yes. It's not hard to be white. I know. People are tuning in all the time to make sure yeah. they get a little piece of your advice and everything. Is there a lot of pressure you know, associated with that? Because there's so many people, you know, leaning on every word. Like, yeah. uh, what you're going to say next? You Sonya, know. fix my life. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's new show. I'm just right. saying. Okay. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, there is. I feel pressure to make sure that my message is real, that mm -hmm. I'm honest and authentic. But I think honest and authentic also means not perfect. So I tell mm -hmm. people, I can't, fi I can't fix your life because actually that's up to you. Absolutely. Um, but, but what I can do is live authentically from this belief of radical self-love. Mm -hmm. I can be honest about where I am today and where I'm trying to go tomorrow. And hopefully I can be um, a light for other people mm -hmm. on that pathway that feels dim sometimes. And speaking of being a light, you believe even the power of art as a vehicle for social and self-change. Yeah. So what's next for you? That's a good question. So for the last 15 years, I've been a performance poet, mm -hmm. uh, making my living writing and performing poetry all over the world. It's been amazing. Um, I feel like there is more, way more books in me, lots of books, um, and also a stage show. I've really been oh. thinking, people have been asking me, so where did these ideas come from, Sonia? How have you grown into this particular mindset? Um, and I want to talk about my family and my journey mm -hmm. and how I got here. Here, um, because I think there's something really powerful about the trauma and the challenges that I've been through mm -hmm. and um, the power of overcoming, the power I of resiliency. I, I even have a name for your show already. Oh, I'm oh. ready for so it. So you know how you have the vagina monologues? Yes. This will be you on stage and it'll be called the self-love soliloquies. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, there you go. I was like, I was going to I was like, I know there's a cut coming. I tell you what's
thank you so much for joining us. You are amazing. So, so inspirational. Please keep it up. I promise. I'll do my best. All right. And 360, we'll be right back after this break. Don't go anywhere.